at Colossians chapter 3. We're just going to read verse 16 this morning. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. With all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do praise your awesome and holy name. Father, you are worthy of our praise. What you have done for us, what you continue to do for us, Lord, to bring us back into fellowship with you, to give us a clean conscience, to put your spirit in us, to walk among us and call us your people, your family, your sons and daughters. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for your word that you have given to us and that this can richly dwell within us. And the Father, that shows up in the music that we listen to, the music that we sing. I ask that you be with me today, Lord, as I preach your word, that I would communicate it in accordance with the truth that you have written. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so today I just want to I, I have a few uh, interesting, well, you guys might find them strange uh, things that I'm going to bring up today or bring in today. Uh, it, it will have a purpose, I, I think, so just, well, enjoy something different a little bit later today and just keep a good attitude about it because we're doing this with thankfulness, right? In our hearts, be thankful to God. So just a, a few main points here from verse 16. Scripture says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. We spent a lot of time last week on that, making sure that, well, what's our commitment to God's word? How well do we know it? Are we, do we have riches? Is it overflow from us? Encouraged us that way. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs is what though he, he shifts into this next. I'm, I'm not actually going to even spend with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another. We could preach a message on that itself. I'm just going to key in on this part of it with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And then singing with thankfulness in our hearts to God. So we're going to key in on the second half of this verse today. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, and singing with thankfulness. Big picture, I just want to remind you really quickly what Colossians 3, as we've gotten here, what this is about. If then, you've been raised up with Christ. This is particularly applicable to those who have been immersed into Christ. Otherwise, you can try to 1% yourself and you'll never get to the 100% that God has desired. There will still be that huge gap between you and God. The world has a lot of things figured out in terms of success, principles of success, because well, people are interested in making money, people are interested in being successful. They can take the principles that God has put into place and apply them in a physical way in their life. But if you've not been raised up with Christ, you're never going to have the spiritual success that God wants you to have. And so if then you've been raised up with Christ, the way Colossians 3 starts, then keep seeking the things above where Christ is, right? You've died. Your life's hidden with Christ and God. I'm thankful for that. Old man gone. God rewriting our past, okay? rewriting our present, rewriting our future. Christ is our life. Dead to all the deeds of the flesh. That old person who engaged in those things in thought, in mind, in actions, in words, behavior, that person dead. You died. Dead to the deeds of the flesh. Consider yourself that way. And then put on a heart of all these good things, these good godly qualities. This is the context of Colossians 3. And then a building. So some of the particulars here. Building. Then let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. We want to be thankful. And let the word of Christ richly dwell within us. So that's kind of leading us up to where we are. I want to, well, as we, as we move forward here, I'll just say your thought world. Your thought world dictates your life. If there is one particular thing that I want you to get out of this passage of Colossians, it is that your thought world dictates your life. Corbin was talking this morning in his opening. And the decisions that we make, the conscious decisions that we make, here's, here's the reality, brethren. Our, 
our brains, if you will, the top 10% is conscious. The, below ni- the, the 90% below that is the subconscious. The most important conscious thoughts that you have is determining what you are going to allow into the subconscious. Because that 90% that is in there is what comes out as to who you are under pressure. Who you are consistently day in, day out. Yep, when I was younger, my body didn't let me know. It wasn't apparent. Um, looks like we need new, some new batteries here. Is this on? Just new batteries. The do it all man. This guy is faithful and dependable. And we'll, I'm going to put him to the test with the crazy stuff later today. We'll see how he does. Ah. I'm, I have confidence in you, Bob. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Where's that 90% subconscious? I got to pull it up to the conscious here. Oh, yeah, my body letting me know. Yeah, those are things that probably I sometimes try to still avoid. But when I was younger, my body didn't let me know that it doesn't know how to process sugar. Okay? As I've gotten older, my body lets me know it doesn't know how to process sugar. And so, Stuff just kind of accumulates. Let's just put it that way, right? And so you look in the mirror and you see an accumulation of what your body doesn't know how to process. So there are times I think, man, I should probably really get serious and do something about that. But as Corbin was talking about, sometimes those conscious decisions in the moment. So this morning... Instead of saying, eat clean, I said, hmm, homemade eggnog latte. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Okay? It's a good choice. So bottom line is this. The reason I'm bringing this up is it is not, it, it, at this point in time in my life, it has not yet been worth it to me to make those key decisions in those key moments. This body's the king. Whatever you want to do that way, that's up to you. Okay? The outer man's the king. It's not going to last forever. But this is part I want you to think about. Most people, and I want you to ask yourself, do you care enough about your spiritual condition to make the choices about what you put in? That has eternal consequences, doesn't it? That's important. And most people ignore, they don't make conscious decisions about the 90% that goes in subconsciously. So there's some principles here, and I I hope we understand this. Your thought world dictates your life. I I also got this example, Joe, from uh, Atomic Habits, but example of heroin addicts in Vietnam. Over 15% of U.S. soldiers in Vietnam were heroin addicts. Some follow-up research, maybe as high as 20% of soldiers there were. Now, what do you know about heroin addiction? Very, very, very difficult, right? It's one of the, the most addictive substances. People have a hard time breaking that addiction. But here's the amazing thing. Upon returning home, 90% of those soldiers, of those addicts, made a full recovery, Typically, 90% after going to rehab, relapse. What's the, like, this is completely opposite numbers of what you would expect. What was the difference? Well, here's what even worldly researchers have, researchers have come to this conclusion. Environment is more important than willpower. It's about environment. So when you come home and you, from from your time in Vietnam as a soldier there, and you step back into a family environment, etc., that environment changes 
And most of these people were actually able to overcome their addiction because of that environment change. Now, guess what? Most people go into rehab, and there is a temporary environment change where they're not allowed to. That's taken away. They go without heroin while they're there. But when they come back out, guess what they go back into? The same environment where they were addicted in. Here's the reason I'm bringing this up. Brother, you and I, we primarily, we, let's just say this. We need to take responsibility and realize we can choose our mental environment. There are times that there are things beyond your control about what's going on around you and what your mind has to be subjected to. I'm just going to say the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension shall guard your hearts and your minds. In those circumstances, if what you willingly choose, when it is your choice, what you actively put in, you choose. Uh, just a fair question for every one of us. Do I care enough about my spiritual condition? Do I care enough about my eternity to be disciplined in what I put in? You can control your mental environment. My dad preached a message. I never did listen to it. I just loved the title. It was at an Ohio, I think, Lancaster family camp. I heard the title. I was like, I bet that was a good message. I should probably go listen to it sometime. And the title of it is, What Would You Be Singing? Is that right, Mr. Wilson? You remember the message or not? Okay. I'm, I'm tempted to give you the mic, but I'm not going to. Um, so, Paul and Silas, when they're in prison in Philippi, right? I mean, in a prison, in, you know, feet and stalks. And what are they doing? They're praying and singing hymns of praise to God. Now, you can envision yourself. Yeah, well, I'm being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. I'm throwing, I will be doing that. Actually, one thing I like about this congregation in Bozeman, we sing all four verses most of the time on songs. In Billings, lots of times we sang first and last, so I got some gaps in those second and third verses. But I'm thinking, man, someday in, in a concentration camp or something, I'm going to like that I know all these songs and all the verses, and I bet I'll be able to be pulling them up. Like, that's, that's a good thing. It's easy to say that and to envision that in your mind. What are you singing right now when you're having a bad day? Circumstances don't go your way. Are you singing hymns of praise to God? If you don't do that right now in the moment in the little things that go, relatively little things that go bad, what would you be under persecution? How about Jesus? Before Jesus went to the cross, it's an interesting thing. They go out to the Mount of Olives and what do they do? Sing a hymn. Okay. Then into Gethsemane. There's something about this principle of the word of, of Christ richly dwelling within you through psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. I, I want to spend a, a moment here about the power of music. I think most of us understand this. But Andrew Fletcher, 17th century Scottish political writer, thinker, he said, give me the making of the songs of a nation and I care not who writes its laws. doesn't matter if the Constitution is supposed to be the law of this land. If you listen to our modern music, you realize we are in big trouble. Okay. I, well, how do I uh, I'll just say this? Satan seems to have a special interest in music. You can do some research on your own. Ezekiel 28, Prophecy Against King of Tyre. That prophecy against King of Tyre really goes the power behind the throne, comes after Satan himself. And one of the things, New King James says it, timbrels and pipes. Okay. Looks like Satan had some particular skill in the realm of music. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, talks about the prince of the power of the air that is now working. The spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience. Okay. So, so Satan has some particular interest okay, in the realm of music. Now, we got to be careful. we got to be on guard against this. You know, I, th I think about the power of music at a personal level. Have you guys ever noticed that music, if we could say it this way, speaks to your soul? 
You know what I mean? Like, well, let's, let's just say this. Next time you watch a movie, try, try watching it without any of the music. Scary, mo scary movies aren't near so scary without the music. Sad movies aren't near so sad without the music. Okay? Music, music has a tremendous impact on, on you. I would just kind of say at that soul level. There is a, you know, sad, angry, cheerful, scared. A lot of our music today filled with angst, right? The, the subconscious memory. What music, I mentioned this before, that I didn't listen to that much worldly music. I mean, I made a conscious decision not to, and it's still amazing to me, songs from the late 80s, early 90s come on, and how many words my brain knows because of places that it was played without my willing it's just amazingly powerful. Uh, a couple examples. Uh, my friend Todd Cooper has gone on to glory. Um, but Coop and I lived together for a while in Great Falls. And we actually had to share this one big room. And at night, I mean, our bedroom was the same bedroom. It was a big one, but we were on. But he had this tape. It was cassette tapes back then. And uh, this group called Idol Cure. And I listened to it. It was something I had. So I was listening to that every night while I was reading the book, Wuthering Heights. Okay? I, I know, really weird connection. But years later, Coop and I were driving together. We found this tape of his. I don't cure tape in his car. We threw it in. And it's amazing to me. I had pictures, images from that book come flooding back into my mind. What I'm telling it, saying is, there's, music is incredibly powerful to associate memory. Okay. Now, the, when I talk about satanic music, I don't know what all is out there. I will say this. There was a guy in, in Billings who I went to him at Great Clips, and he cared about a bald guy and still cut my hair well. And I was like, yeah, I don't know how tough it is, but it seems to be, this guy was good at what he did. And I said, you know, the, the scripture says, you see a man skilled in his work, he'll stand before kings. He won't stand before obscure men. We were talking, I was like, you should go on your own. He and his brother and some other guys went, they started their own. I won't say the name of it, but it was a barber shop. They were very, very good at what they did in, in terms of barber. I uh, would go in there. To their new place because I was trying to support this guy and he was good at what he did but one day I went in there and I I don't try to tell anybody else what to do how to run their business and that's not my but I will tell you this the music that was playing in there was so obscene I'll just say degrading to women I had to say something it was it was not right side note I I think it's an absolute joke that our culture talks about equality of women, and yet everything that's promoted actually is very degrading to them. This is total incongruent insane. But I, I had to say something. The way I, I said, you ever heard of Lecrae? He's like, who's that? He's like, a uh, Christian rap guy. No, I said, just check it out. And then whenever I would come in there, they just shut the music off, which I was thankful for. Okay? But you know, what I'm saying is, there is, music is incredibly powerful in it can be very, very evil. Now, most of us live to the level of the music that we listen to. The reason I say most of us is some of us don't really listen to music. Okay. But most of us live to the, to the level of the music that we listen to. And I will tell you this. These guys that were in that place, how do you think their marriages were? You listen to that kind of stuff all day long? They didn't stay married. I just put it simple. Okay? Lots of other stuff won't go into. But it, it showed up in their life. That is true for all of us. You think, well, I, the music I listen to isn't that bad. If you catch yourself and say, isn't that bad, that might tell you something. I've found that even a lot of worldly music that we wouldn't say is it's not anti-scriptural, but even think about this. A lot of it is, there's nostalgia, like remember the times. Or there's yearning, longing for what 
this, this hole in your heart that you don't have fulfilled. Now, I've found, I've worked with people, struggled, depression, that kind of stuff, and I've found there is one spot people do not want to give up. And that is the music that they listen to. But I will tell you this. If you listen to music that is filled with even things that nostalgia, yearning, longing, what do you think, if you're struggling with depression, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to continue to reinforce in your mind sadness and the state that you're in. This is an example okay, across the board. Okay? I, I, uh, back, in, back in my day, back masking was a thing, right? So the, some of the the secular rock bands would put back, back masking on there and everybody would like playing, playing it backwards and they'd say, can you believe they said this about Jesus of Nazareth or whatever. And the joke is, you know what happens if you listen to country music backwards? If you listen to country music backwards, you get your dog back, pick up back, your wife or husband back, whatever. That's kind of the, what I'm saying is, if you listen to most worldly music, guys, it is not congruent. It is not consistent with the word of Christ richly dwelling within you. It actually leads you down a path in your mind that 90% of the subconscious, and it is dictating your life and taking you down a path that, well, that's where you're going to end up. So what's scripture say? Well, let's listen to good stuff. Okay? Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. I start with, with hymns. I like hymns. I'm thankful in this congregation we sing hymns. I, what I, I think what I like the most about hymns is the depth of scriptural words. Now, sometimes we change them because it doesn't quite match up, right, with the scripture. But I like it. You can tell the songwriters a lot of depth of scriptural words. I like that. That's the kind of stuff I want going through. That's the word of Christ, richly dwelling within us. How about Psalms? I, I just had given an example on Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah, right? Psalm 148. Matter of fact, I bet you, Jim, if you open that hymn book right there for me, you can flip to any one of these, and there's a scripture that kind of is associated with it, right? So you can pick any one of those, and there's some sort of scripture that's associated in general with that hymn. I like that. Okay? How, Psalms. Psalms mean with accompanying instrument. I don't, I'm not preaching on instrumental music today, non-instrumental music. There are many churches of Christ, non-instrumental. The big issue there is worship. They don't understand worship, but I will just say this. God likes music that praises him a cappella and with instrument. Psalm 98, 4 through 6, I don't have time to read it. You can check it out. The Psalms, what that word means is solo in the Greek means with accompanying instrument. Okay? And so all those Psalms, David was a musician. Okay? He, he liked to play the instruments. Uh, Davis was talking about what you guys did on a, a night, I don't know if it was before or after family camp, but the campfire and uh, soon to win to, on the guitar. That's good stuff. If the content, and that's what I'm going to primarily talk about today is content, but some people think, as, as it's a weird thing, I know, but non-instrumental, you can't use instruments to praise God. That's really weird because the Old Testament very clearly does. In heaven, we very clearly do. Why wouldn't we now? And especially since he specifically says, Psalms, you can. Okay? I have some ideas about that. Some fun stuff, maybe, that we try every once in a while in the future. I will say, side note, one thing I love about a cappella congregational singing is that we aren't dependent on an instrument. Okay? We're not, we can, and I think as a congregation, we can do better on that, but I'll get to the end. I'll, I'll save that for when I'm preaching at the end. Ah, spiritual songs, scriptural words that put to the music of our culture. Okay? His church is marching on. Matter of fact, a lot of hymns actually were, you might find that music being played in the bars on the, the honky-tonk piano, and they put scriptural words to it. That's nothing wrong with that. I like his church is marching on. We know that's a change from Battle Hymn of the Republic, which itself is a good song. Okay? But 
scriptural words put to music of our culture. A few examples that I have. One thing I like in uh, Billings, I'm not really familiar with the worldly song Locomotion. Okay, but you guys, some of you probably know that from the past. And these guys, I just put one, one uh, verse. They have, th I think, three verses of it. They just changed it over from locomotion to new creation. And, man, that is fun. And when, if Mark Donnie was playing the piano, we are come on, church, let's be that new creation. Come on, church, let's be that new creation. I, I don't know how the song goes well enough. But, anyways, hopefully you get a little bit. Here's what I want to think about. My friend Coop, I mentioned him again. So some of you might remember the old song, Born to be Wild. Coop changed the words to that, Reborn to be Light. And he would sing that, Reborn to be Light. There was a, I don't, I think there's some country song maybe, and I don't, I think it might have been Seven Women on my mind. I'm not sure, but he changed it to Seven Scriptures on my mind. And the way he would say it is, I got seven going down the road, trying to loose my load. I got seven scriptures on my mind. Four of them reprove me. Two of them rebuke me. One says Christ's a friend of mine. So, you know, just changing, changing things from the past into the right, appropriately scriptural lyrics. I went, went to a camp when I was young, and uh, sometime in high school, actually, and they made us watch some video about the evils of satanic music. And they showed us a bunch of, do you, Matt, do you remember, uh, okay, they, they, I don't know if you were there, it was Birch Camp, and they showed us like videos, some of these music videos. I'd never seen them before. Boy, I learned a lot of <laughs> satanic stuff quick. Um, but, but one of the things, there was some song that's, uh, we're not going to take it anymore. And, and uh, then I Somewhere was reading in the Psalms, and it's like, we don't sit with the pretenders, right? And I was like, hey, I like this. We're not going to fake it anymore. So I rewrote some of the words, a few that I remember from the song. We're not going to fake it. No, we're going to make it. We're not going to fake it anymore. We don't sit with the pretenders. We're at war. We are contenders. We're not going to fake it. Anyways, what I'm saying is, feel free. Have fun. Do this. Take words. Uh, some of you might, have, might be familiar with the, the group Apologetics. They've done a nice job of remaking a lot of worldly songs into scriptural messages. Um, I'm going to have you, this is the part where we're going to get a little interesting. I'm just having a few clips played of some of my favorite songs over the years. So most of this, yes, I'm 50 years old. Okay, you got to, I'm up here this morning, you're not, so you got to put up with me a little bit. But just a few, so this is actually one of my favorite songs, Old, old Man's Rubble. Some of you might know the Amy Grant version of this. I like the Imperials because they focus on the positive, too. I just have a little clip. Bob, I'm ready if you want to hit it. I want to live as a new creation. I want that mindset. Being clothed in power and my I like music that's gonna reinforce that into my mind. All right, one of my favorites, Petra, in the likeness of you. Psalm 17, actually. Interesting. It's Romans 6 and Psalm 17. You might not have never made a connection, the end of Psalm 17 before with Romans 6, but it's cool if you if you think about that. All right, go ahead, Bob. So I like, I like to think about the transforming power that God has, where he is actually changing me into his legs. Here's a song that reinforces that, Romans 6, Psalm 17. Some of you guys like a little more, mm, get after it, dead reckoning. This is straight Romans 6, but I love the end of this here um, because I want you to think about Colossians 3 earlier says, you've died, right? You've died and your life's hidden with Christ in in God. Go ahead, Bob. I 
I like the last part of that. Okay? If you were immersed into Christ, isn't this true? That on a hill long ago where the blood runs below, and really that blood we know has been put into heaven, okay? Died a king, two thieves. Yeah, we remember that. Oh, and you, because we were immersed into his death, weren't we? All right, one more Petra, and then we'll get on to some other stuff. I know. One of my favorites. So I, I got my dad on this one. Okay, he, he wasn't so sure about what this stuff I was listening to, Petra. I was like, Dad, you got to listen to this song. He listened to it. He's like, I like that song. And then he's like, who was that? I was like, Petra. Anyways, go ahead, Bob. Take me past the allegories To the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people Just to sing your praise I hope you this for your righteousness And it's only found one place Take me Say Book of Hebrews for that one. Okay, that's good. Good stuff. All right. Hey, how about this one? Hey, there's some of you guys a little more country. Country. I tried to get a little in here for you. Okay. I don't know this song real well, but I like it. It's about immersion. All right. I like this. Not only it uh, not only talk about immersion, down with the old, up with the new, but even gets the terminology right about who was on the shore, the saints, right? I like this. This is good, good stuff. What I'm trying to communicate is if you want to, you can find music that will reinforce good scriptural thoughts. Now, I'm not a huge music listener to, so what I do is I tell my buddy Mikel, I was like, hey, when you find a good song, let me know. So there's some updated stuff I don't have in here. You guys are stuck listening. Well, I'm, I'm going to skip this one, Bob. This one of Matthew's my favorite just from when he was a little guy. I made him listen to it. Uh, you changed my world. I'm a kingdom man. We talked about being a kingdom man. He said this made a big difference in his life of who he is because we talked about this in our family. This is who we are. All right, I am going to, oh, I'll skip this one too. Um, Rich Mullins, great song. Such thing as glory. I like it. Jesus lives in glory. Jesus reigns as heaven's king. Amen. Yeah. Okay. There is such thing as glory. We want to see Christ in glory. I am going to hit this last one because I mentioned Lecrae and some of you guys might be. I'm not personally a rap guy, but hey, I think it's rap is scriptural. If you look back there, Moses was the first rap artist. He uh, spoke the words of this song in the hearing of the people. Okay. You know, that's the way it is. Bob, uh, the last one on there, uh, Lecrae, if you'd hit that. For God alone, oh my soul wait in silence, my hope is from him, he's my only rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken, on God rest my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God, trust in him at all times people, pour your heart out before him, God is a refuge for us, yeah. My God is not far away, if you didn't pick up on what that was. All right, my point is, you can find music that you like, and you can make sure that it is consistent with what you want to put into your life. Brethren, it is worth it. Okay? We live in the top 10%, we live in what is being run under that 90%. The place to make conscious decisions is what you allow in there. I cannot emphasize this enough. Some of us, we're not happy with our life. We're not happy with the course of it. Change what you're putting in. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. 
All right, there is a scriptural command, sing. Okay, we're, actually this is Colossians 3, that's really what this is about. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Congregational singing. Okay? God wants us to sing. I don't know how you guys are, but I, I go to these weddings and there's a dance or whatever, and I'm, yeah, I'd, I'm not really a dancer. I'm not, eh, I'm not good at it. Never practiced it. Didn't take any dance classes. Julie's patient with me, but most of the time I say, eh, eh. Let everybody else just, every once in a while she can get me to get out on the dance floor and, you know, uh, now what am I doing? Uh, anyways, okay. but why, why am I bringing that up? Because some of us, we become Christians, I don't sing. Well, if God told me to get out on the dance floor and dance, I'm going to get out on the dance floor if God told me that. <laughs> you know what God did tell me? Sing. God told me to sing. Brother, our congregation, we can we can do better. Sing. Mr. Sutton wasn't here today. Hey, their family's gone. Wasn't as loud as singing. We can, we can sing. I want to encourage you. Like, this is your opportunity to admonish one another, to help set each other's minds right. It is, like David said, it's an important part of the assembly of the saints. We, want, we can be active participants. We, we do well. We do well. But I'll just say some of us can do better. It, honestly, you might, well, I'm not a good singer. You guys know I make jokes about it, but it's true. They never let me lead the singing in Billings ever, not once in all the times I was there. I don't, but you know, it, by the time it gets to God, it sounds good. If you're singing with thankfulness in your heart, the Holy Spirit, if he can straighten out some prayers, he can straighten out my voice. And by the time it gets to God, it sounds beautiful to him. Sing with good attitude, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You know, I, my mom, one thing I really miss about my mom, but she would just go out about her day and you hear her humming, singing, humming, Scott, like nodding. It's really hard to have a bad attitude when you're humming or singing spiritual songs. Like, basically, it's impossible to. You want to have a good attitude when you're sitting in jail, feet in the stocks? Pray and sing. You'll have a good attitude. So God wants us to. And we get, like I said, to teach and admonish each other as we do that together. The word of Christ, richly dwelling within us. This is an important part of it, brethren. So some of us, if we've been opting out of the singing, I don't, I'm not the guy to come around and, Jimmy, I can't hear you. Tom, are you booming it out? You know? Give me a, give me a, no, no, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, that's not my place, is it? I like you. <laughs> that's not my place. Okay. But, but the Lord's listening, isn't he? And he wants you to, so sing. No, I'm not asking you to do a solo. That wouldn't be scriptural. That wouldn't be scriptural anyways to have you do that here. So the, the word of Christ richly dwells within us as we sing songs that, that please God. Proverbs 29, 6 tells us the righteous. The righteous sings and rejoices. It's part of who we are. Okay. So, brethren, let's sing. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Through him, through Christ, right, we continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. That is the, that is the fruit of lips that gives thanks to his name. Okay, this is an opportunity for us to tell God, to tell each other how joyful and thankful we are. I'll just close with this. Every one of us, we live to the level of the music that we listen to. And you might think you don't sing, but you sing, you sing the music you listen to. You ever had one of those songs on playback in your mind? Sometimes some of the ones that I don't like, and I don't mean they're necessarily inappropriate, just ones that drive me bonkers because they're going and going. The only way i found to get that out of there is to sing a different song. So we want to put the right stuff in. We can control our mental environment, brethren. And your thought world, 
Your thought world dictates your life. If there's one thing you get out of Colossians chapter 3, it is of the particulars. It is your thought world dictates your life. What are you putting in? I want to encourage you that way. Follow through 2022.